of slutty bricks <laughs> tag <laughs> <laughs> text. I bring your prov legs for I'll put up for your prov we legs. We are prov legs. Hello and welcome <laughs> to Top prov- Time <laughs> with Zach, David, and Shade and Prov Broadway. I'm Zach. I'm Dave. I'm Shay. And this is a talk time show where we talk not just about time, but in time. Guys, you, how the heck are you doing? I'm ready, dude. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. It's a perfect way to start an uh, improv show is with a no premise. <laughs> That's why you like it. No That's what we silly gotta try. bits. We gotta try. No new choice. <laughs> it's just three friends chit chatting about anything. Well, I want to talk about this crazy movie my grandma made me watch. Okay, let's yeah, open I gotta up. Hear it. Shay's grandma. Was the child of only the only divorced child that she knew? That she knew. Child of divorce. In a town, her her mom got married when she was sixteen, and then she divorced her husband two years later. And then my grandma's (laughs) aunt (laughs) tried to take custody of my grandma because she said a single mom is unfit to rule the roost of a child. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that crazy? My grandma forgave her. She was like, she was just doing what she thought was best, which is stealing a babe like Rumpelstiltskin. From her sister. From her sister. Or her sister-in-law. Her sister. From her blood sister. Yeah. So her blood sister was only 18? Yeah, I guess so. So she's like, because I'm married, I am more fit to raise your child than you. Yeah. Dude, and the courts were like, (laughs) <laughs> Overruled. Overruled. Or yeah, ruled. Ruled. <laughs> ruled. <laughs> ruled. <laughs> and then she got married pretty fast after that to a guy named Tommy, who was cowboy. He wrote cowboy poems. Oh my god. <laughs> And is this the grandpa you know and love? No, no, no. This is my grandma's dad. Oh, okay. Or her Your stepdad. Great, great, great step grandpa. Yeah, and she calls her real dad father and her stepdad dad. I may not have been your daddy, <laughs> but I am your father. <laughs> it's, uh, I married your mother when she was 16. <laughs> my, my, my grandma got married at 16. Isn't that crazy? Oh, my God. It's yeah, so yeah, wild. It's wild. 14 and 16 was my aunt and uncle. He You're was 16. She was 14. She was, six, she was 14. He was 16. They signed the papers. He started an electrical company. Now he has... A Monet in his house. What? Whoa. Rich boy. Rich boy. I guess you should marry young. Uncle Geary. Rich boy. We're looking for sponsors. We're looking for electrical sponsors. All the way in Idaho. I probably got all that wrong. But. <laughs> <laughs> He's been dead for years. And they were it's just, yeah, when you're a grandkid, you only hear little bits of the stories while adults are talking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So tell, tell us about your grandma's unfit home um, and the movie that she showed you. <laughs> So I, but the thing is, I love my grandma so fiercely. She is a cool lady, and she's always like learning new stuff. She's always reading. She is, of course, you know. She considered feminism once. Yes. And then <laughs> she thought said, about not it. Not for me. And said, but you know what? She's having her like kind of feminist awakening right now because Ooh. she's living with my aunt, and my aunt's like, "Don't let Grandpa treat you that way." <laughs> <laughs> Never too late. <laughs> Never too late. Yeah. This is kind of fun. How old your grandma? She's, I don't know, but my grandpa's 91. Oh, okay, they're up there. Yeah. She's 60. Never too She's late, like ladies. Or hey, something. ladies, never too late. Never too late. <laughs> <laughs> to stand up for yourselves. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's like kind of cool because she's like, oh, yeah, because my grandpa's like, Used to having like meals cooked for him and like Ooh, you know dude, my grandpa too yeah Idaho style it was so weird we could not eat anything until he came out of the bathroom after washing his hands <laughs> the and, bathroom. Came, and came and sat at the table you and so like we would all pile around the like grandma's kitchen table and like uh, it was food time and they would always have like some of the same foods that they would always have oh yeah and you could not touch it until Grandpa Leonard got out of his old man chair <laughs> and he sat there all day That's crazy. and slowly shuffled to the bathroom and washed his hands for like 10 minutes and then came back and finally sat at the head of the table and then we would say a prayer and I remember just hating him. My, my ex is great. <laughs> just because you couldn't eat. Well, just because we were all sitting there and I was like, we're waiting on this guy who walks so slow. <laughs> Got a messy mouth when he eats. What the heck, Grandma? He's washing it so slow. Yeah, it's the dude. only time he cleans his fingernails in the yeah. water. Scandy, dude. My ex is great, Grandpa. Every meal, so if they had like a pot pie, he'd get one pot pie to himself and the rest of the family would share the second pot pie. <laughs> that, that crazy? is crazy. 
Dude, yeah. he gets to have as much. Ooh, dude, the patriarchy is strong. It is, strong. dude. That trigger uh, the pot tr- pie patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> that triggers Amy. That's Amy, my spouse. That triggers Amy. Is in her family, the boys could have seconds. But the girls couldn't. Oh, oh my, my god! And it was like, because the men have to work hard with their bods. They need more calories. And the women just need to... You don't need calories yeah. to yeah. save pregnant. up for them breasts. Yeah. Until you're pregnant. <laughs> until lay, you're pregnant. lay still all day. <laughs> you can have seconds when you have a pregnant. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's really for the baby. <laughs> that's that's right. what we're waiting for. And that's who matters. <laughs> okay, uh, this movie. <laughs> okay, so this movie is Richard Dreyfuss. Here's what's crazy, my Richard grandma. Richard Dreyfuss, who was the dad in... What what about Bob? That's yes. what I know him from. Father it, to Julia Louise. It also has Meryl Drives. Streep's daughter, who is not famous, but has been trying to be an actor for a long time. Just Bless poor thing. her. Poor thing. Bless her. Just like an Olsen twin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> She's the Olsen twins of the Streep family. <laughs> but she... <laughs> Um, my grandma said, I think you'll really like this movie, which is insane <sighs> because the whole thing is about like, it is just rooted in sexism. What's the title of the movie? So people have to research it. Oh, it's called the lighthouse keeper. Hmm. And so essentially it's about this guy and it starts out with he Richard Dreyfuss does this whole monologue. He's like, I hate women. I know better than to mess with petticoats. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like every <laughs> there's this other guy who's like, come on, they can't be that bad. And he's like, I moved to the lighthouse to be away from them. See, <laughs> it's like oh, the premise. And then you find out that all that happened to make him hate all women forever <laughs> is that his wife, she had a husband before him, and her husband died, and her husband's dying wish was, please take care of my brother, Benny D. <laughs> <laughs> we, know that, we know what that means. Benny D. Benny D. Benny got the D. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> take care of Benny's D. It's, but, it's such but a she, she didn't marry his brother. No. She just had to take care of his yeah. brother and then married Mitch, Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> yeah. Wait, take care of his D or take his care name of Benny, is, is Benny, Benny D. His name is well, Benny yeah, D. yeah. And, and, but that's clearly the. Did they the sleep problem. together? No. no. And they show him in the movie and he's gross and bedraggled and Ooh. he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. He <laughs> talks like an insane. So clearly they're like, he's gross. He's so gross. But he doesn't want to marry. Anyway, so Richard Dreyfus's character, uh, clearly Benny D, is like whispering in her ear about how Richard Dreyfus sucks, I guess. And so, anyways, he goes in and she, he sees his wife crying, and she he's like, "What's wrong?" And then she's like, "You wouldn't understand." And then he's like, "Well, I may be no genius." And then she's like, she stops and, she, and he says, "She stopped and she was like, you're <laughs> right. You are." No genius. And I walked out and <laughs> left the house that day. That's what made him leave his wife and live in a lighthouse for decades. And I forgot the most important part. Yeah. When she said, You're right, you are no genius, he said, That's Betty D talking. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes. was Richard he swore off doing women this forever. Irish accent? <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> Richard D. Come on, Richie D. Richie What's D. going on, Bucko? Um. So then his wife comes back at the end. I'm skipping straight to the end. There's a whole bunch of weird shenanigans. There's this. There's another guy who also says he hates women, but his story was way more dark. Like he was trying to commit suicide, and that's how he washed up on the shore of Richard Dreyfus's like house. Oh, yeah. And then it, that was because his lover really did commit suicide, and that's why he hated women. <laughs> <laughs> Women are so selfish. <laughs> always killing themselves and caring for others. And your grandma thought you'd really love this She's movie. Like, I think it, well, she thought it was cute. That's what's crazy. Oh my god. She's gosh. like, it's so sweet. And that's what's so weird is even when they come together. He's like telling her what to do. He's like, you will be staying with me in the lighthouse. And she's like, why? You've become so much more of a man. Because all of a this lighthouse? Stuff. You're a genius. <laughs> yeah. And and then like the one sweet thing I guess is that she's like he's like you know why I'm be more of a man? Because I'm by the sea. And by sea, I'm a man. And by land, I'm a wimp. And then she's like, 
<laughs> why are you not Gosh. like on the boat? <laughs> and she's like, because I promised he that I would stay on land, didn't I? And then she's like, so sweet that he kept my promise even after he walked out of my life forever. This is so crazy for Richard Dreyfuss because I've only really seen him in What About Bob, which is a phenomenal movie. It's an incredible comedy movie. But from what I remember, if I remember this correctly, he's like a pretty dramatic actor. He's yeah. been like a serious actor. <laughs> yeah. So he hated Bill Murray because Bill Murray is like a notorious jokester and doesn't take things seriously. Oh. And so yeah. weird, he's just like, I don't like Bill Murray. He's not serious on set to go to, it must have been Benny D. <laughs> it's like Richie. <laughs> Dude, he thought it was going to be his uh, top, his, his all, Mr. Holland's opus. That's, yeah, that's he thought gonna it would be his, be his opus. opus. Yeah. His magnum Holland opus. Yeah. I think magnum. it came out later in his later years yeah. so i don't know if Work it's when yeah if his star had fallen or... Big, i don't know i don't know anything about him but what's also crazy is my grandma said i really like him because he reminds me of my dad and i'm oh. like <laughs> which dad her dad is her, her dad stepdad. or her father okay dad or step dad or father yeah yeah her dad <laughs> well, which her one did she dad. respect her father the she loved she, both of them who she oh. spent most of the time with her stepdad Step so dad. she had a more of a, more of an emotional connection with you. I think she loved she them both. Oh, okay, right Ooh, thanks. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> on live TV, Zach. You gonna do that on live TV? <laughs> no, Benny D, what are you doing? Benny. Benny. That's Benny D rubbing you. <laughs> okay, so here's the last crazy. I mean, there's lots of crazy things, but this was so shocking. <laughs> so, the brother Benny D comes and he's fetching his sister-in-law, and he's like. You're coming with me, and we're leaving you, and we'll never see you, Richard Dreyfus, again. And then um, she says, like, uh, well, no, I'm going to stay with him. And he's like, but the scripture, oh, like, okay, wait. She's like, no, I'm going to stay with Richard, Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> and he says, you're going to deny your dying bro- your dying husband's wish to take care of his brother. And she says, the scriptures say to obey your husband. And guess <laughs> what, Benny D? Your brother's dead. <laughs> and this is my husband now. <laughs> So her response isn't even like, well, I want to stay with my husband. I love him. It's still biblical It still Still. is like, well, guess what? Biblically, I have to do whatever this old pot of gold says. That's right. (laughs) Written and directed by a man, of course. (laughs) Probably. Wouldn't that be shocking? Written, directed, and thought about by a man. (laughs) Written by Amelia Earhart. Oh my gosh, she came back. (laughs) She's been lost in the Bermuda. (laughs) She wrote it. She wrote the script in the Bermuda. Uh, That poor lady, she's like, I got a feature with Richard Dreyfus. (laughs) Can you believe it? I know, Meryl Streep's daughter. I know. A Streep? A Dreyfus? (laughs) This movie will be gold. I know. Mother Meryl? Mother Meryl, will you read my script that I'm supposed to do lines? She's like, like, what? I wouldn't take (laughs) this movie. like, what the? It is a feature. Like, and it is Richard. I couldn't pull this Richard. off. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie. Even I couldn't do this. Dude, lighthouse movies. Have you seen The Lighthouse? With Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. Yeah, with Willem Dafoe no. and Robert Pat- Pattinson. Uh-uh. I haven't seen it. Is it Robert Pattinson? I thought it was a... Uh... It was Robert Pattinson, was it not? Let's go to the viewers. I thought it was... Uh... <laughs> What's his name? Joaquin Phoenix. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Uh... uh What's his name? <laughs> Just keep keep listening, male actors, until you get it. Uh, uh, what's his name in uh, Lord of the Rings? Oh, Orlando uh, Bloom. T- Tougher Grace. Orlando Bloom. No, definitely wasn't. <laughs> oh man, it was in black and white, so I couldn't yeah. tell. It was, it was definitely Robert Pattinson. And okay. Willem Dafoe. It's a very it's weird one. It's a, you you, saw, you saw should it. show your grandma. The Lighthouse. And tell her it's the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sequel. <laughs> it's grandma. Willem Dafoe. And, Touching himself in a lighthouse. Oh my, really? Yeah, it's a, it's wild. You wow. should see it. There's a the mermaid love scene. That sounds fun. It's I like crazy. Mermaids. It's a crazy show. We Dude. almost watched that because I couldn't remember the name. And I was like, Grandma, is this it? And she was like, yeah. And then we started the first five seconds. And then she said, I don't think this is it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember Dreyfus doing this to himself. <laughs> 
<laughs> Richard Dreyfus looks older oh. and uh, older and more hideous, <laughs> goblin looking. <laughs> More like my dad, <laughs> less like my father. <laughs> David, do you ever see the animated movie Thumbelina? I didn't. I just knew Thumbelina, the term. Okay, you knew the story, the yeah. old story. I recently watched that as an adult, and holy cow, how crazy! What a, what an <laughs> the, the, what an insane example of misogyny and like in the <laughs> closet homophobia and just uh, like oh my goodness i could not believe with my older eyes watching this 90s film with the voice of ariel poor thing talk about that is grace w- oh shoot. Talk about stars. it's the voice of ariel yeah but they wrote her music outside of her key outside of her normal range and so she likes even that then sounds kind of crazy oh shoot yeah she's awesome though i like her she's incredible i love her she's the best <laughs> she's a victim of that movie that's wild yeah. It and is weird to go back to your old movies that you like yes. obsessively watched when you were a kid. Yes. Uh, Indian in the Cupboard was one that I watched over and over again. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, it's, I, haven't, I haven't gone back to watch it. I can't. Are you afraid to? I'm pretty sure it's like brown face native. It is? I think so. Ooh. I think it's some, there's some Is it there. crazy that I, my brain remembers them as absolutely 100% authentic yeah, Native American that? people? Uh, yeah. It's like, of course. Oh, <laughs> and just weird, a little boy has power over these. And cause yeah. one to die. Oh, that is uh, weird. Dude, I don't know. I gotta go back and watch it. There's, I don't think I've ever seen We just seen watched, that. Uh, around the holidays, my wife and I watched like every rom-com that's on Netflix or whatever. Heck yeah. And uh, I think 10 Things I Hate About You was on the last one. And it's problematic. It is, the language in those movies, any movie in the 90s was so violent toward like obese people for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> any fat, it's all like, oh gosh, look at that fat. <laughs> Pig eating, look at him eating his belly. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's like so, Shay, Shay, t- 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 so wild the, uh, to see. Tell me about the British show you saw. I think I showed it oh, you to did? you but on TikTok. They're like, it's just like these British people so out of touch from the 90s. And they're just like, <laughs> let's look at this fat family. And then they show and they're like, and then let's look at this normal family. And then they have these people who are like clearly photoshopped to be thin. <laughs> and then they're like, suck. They're just a bunch of fatties. It's and then they like show fat. the real. F- and it's just like so disgusting. Dude, Britain loves so that creepy. stuff. It's a real reality show that aired on TV. Yeah. Dude, there's a diet believe- swap one um that's where they take people with anorexia and they make them swap <gasps> oh their diet gosh. with people with obesity and they have this big clear tube that they'll like fill full of food on the show so there's like this is what kellyanne eats in a day and they, just, they drop like a few tums and like a bottle of vinegar oh and my the other one's like this is what john beam weighing in at 500 stone and they, <laughs> like Fill the whole thing full of like hamburgers and fries and pancakes and oh stuff. Welcome gosh. to Medicine Swap. Welcome. Billy is bipolar. <laughs> Sandy has ADHD. Dude. Let's see them switch their pills it's and see so, what happens. It's so crazy. <laughs> they sit them down at a table and they give like they plate up both of their like meals but reverse so the person with anorexia has the person with obesity's food oh and my God. it's swapped. And they have to eat and, it? Yeah, and like the anorexic person's always like, how do you even eat this? Not, I can't even fit it in my mouth. Oh and my like, gosh. the other person's like, this is all you eat. <laughs> <laughs> They're all, all the vats in it are Americans. No, that'd be funny, but <laughs> this is all you eat. That is crazy what they're able to get away with. Yeah, dude, oh I think it's funny. Gosh. I think it's funny. It's insane. It's just sad. I don't know. They're they're kind of into that. Have you seen Down to Down for Love? I just saw the title. I'm so excited. I watched like the first few minutes of it. Oh really? I it's heard, out. I yeah, heard it's dude, cute. They're so cute. I heard it's cute. Well, it's like it's like um, what do you call it? Love on the spectrum. Yeah. It's. I get that it's kind of problematic. People are like they're they're capitalizing on this or whatever. Oh, for sure. But it's so cute, dude. And some of those people's lives are so dope because they got that show and they found love because of that show. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. Can it be fun? It's cool to find love. Hollywood is bringing people together. And it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like it. Yeah. It is sweet. Although I will say, like, so Nathan Fields are with Nathan for you and the rehearsal shows. 
that you can, if you put a camera in front of something, Dude, yeah. you can do anything and you can get away with it. Yeah. You can get away with the name of art or TV or whatever. And it's absolutely crazy. We're like, well, it's for money and TV. So I guess, I guess this is okay. We have to <laughs> capture this. That's true. It's our duty to capture this. I know. And they're still getting away with insane stuff. We just watched the newest season of The Ultimatum. Do you know the premise of that show? I haven't. You told me about it. Yeah. That basically it's like a bunch of couples and it's like you had either you you've issued the ultimatum you've said either marry me or let's go on this show and we'll break up and we'll date we'll pick somebody else out of this (laughs) gaggle of couples and we'll sleep with them for two weeks and then we'll decide if we want to marry that person (laughs) or the betrothed we came with (laughs) you describe the log line the more you're like lachey's how did you pull this off and so what was so crazy is nick lachey was like so psychologists all agree that ultimatums really bad for relationships really unhealthy (laughs) but (laughs) welcome to the ultimatum welcome to the ultimatum but then me and zach were like he basically was just like but psychologists also agree that it makes a lot of money when we do this so (laughs) (laughs) let's see it let's see it let's see it and and like they immediately couples immediately see the consequences of their actions being on this show like them immediately dating other people shoot but then they try to hold their feet to the fire it's like you agree to the process that's what's crazy it's like i regret this this is crazy when when they decide to get married everybody is so mad at them because they're like i could have slept in the same bed as you if you separated from your boyfriend you didn't trust in the process (laughs) that was invented by two celebrity (laughs) scene listers they always say like you're here for the wrong reasons and it's like no the reason was pretty much all of them are like I just really want my partner to marry me like that's basically what it is and then the other person's like I don't know I kind of wanted to break up anyway (laughs) this is kind of perfect yeah (laughs) it's like yeah let's do it on TV yeah Yeah. I couldn't help it. It was the TV that did it. I have three yeah. weeks, all expenses paid to date someone else. Dude, yeah. so wild. Yeah. I Absolutely. have heard those some of those like reality shows. Like I was loving Love Island. Oh yeah, dude, was so into it. The 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 beginning one, the one that was in like London or whatever. Oh, super yeah. fit. Like love him so much. Super like super fit. fit. <laughs> like on paper, like every bit. <laughs> mine like super and it was like (laughs) i was loving it and then i got to like the end of the season and found out that a bunch of people had like like that ruined their life to be on that show oh my gosh and i was like oh dang i can't watch it anymore yeah it's weird to incentivize people (laughs) to be the worst version of themselves dude yeah i thought it was so good and then they did the they did like an australian version and a brazilian version and oh well it's it's so saturated now i feel it attracts the people who are like who know what they're signing up for now yeah i think in the beginning they're like i actually do believe in love or i really do think and it was like oh my gosh there's a horrible social experience yeah. But now people know. They're like, I go on to increase my Instagram following and to like jet start my reality career. And I think like if you're single and you're signing up for that stuff, like whatever, that's fun. Yeah. I think people like it sometimes. I think they really love it. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Other people hate it. They feel like abused. That sucks. But the thing that is so crazy to me about the ultimatum is that it's a straight up couple that like yeah. clearly when they're filming you can see their real life it's like frustrations painful. and like loss and grief Oof, dude, and yeah. it's like they didn't have to do this it's only because nick lachey told them to <laughs> yeah. do you think it's re- like i know that some of those it's kind of it's scripted scripted oh, scripted sure. enough right for yeah sure. do you think it's real on I, I think some of them are real. I think the things... I don't know, but... And I also feel like I'm so gullible. Like, anyone can say anything. I'm like, they really meant that. Oh, my gosh. They really do love her after two days. That's crazy. <laughs> but when you watch Love is Blind or The Ultimatum, where they're filming them 24-7, like, yeah. even in bed with those, like, black and white cams where the sound <laughs> is muffled, and I'm the like... teeth and eyes look weird? Yes! <laughs> and it's far away, and yeah. yeah, like... Yeah, they're glowing. They look like werewolves. Yeah. I'm like, I think they forgot the camera is there and that feels real yeah i think after a while they kind of lose touch of the camera and stuff like that and stuff gets well and then they get into it like trying to figure it out like it's like work well they take your phone away 
Um, and you take your laptop away, and you <laughs> literally. So that's like that's why all they're doing is swimming and working out and drinking. That's all you're able to do for like the three weeks you're in yeah. like the mansion or whatever. Dude, so, so of course, wild. like I'm so bored, I'm just gonna rile stuff up. Sophie said, "What? Come over here. Let's fist fight." <laughs> it's just yeah. crazy to me because Nick and Vanessa in the like hash hash outs or whatever let's hash it out at the end of the season they get so mad at everybody they're like what were you thinking brock <laughs> and i'm like you did this to you, them you, did this. <laughs> you could have stopped it at any moment they you could have exactly interceded what you wanted. <laughs> do they have a tell all yeah, they have a tell-all. Dude, of course, dude. But they what's always so funny have a tell-all. Is like, so this so is the good. second season of The Ultimatum. And it felt like with the first season, like first season, people were like, okay, all right, let's I try actually it think out. it's the third. This is the third season. Because they had a queer ultimatum that oh, we need to watch. Oh, gotcha. Okay, well, the second straight one. The second one that right-wing Hollywood cares about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the right ultimatum. <laughs> but anyway, um, so they, like when they're... So when I saw the first one... Like Nick, Nick and Vanessa seem to like actually kind of like yeah. Here's our story, which is crazy <laughs> to be like we're gonna base one. What was their story. other one? Love is blind, right? Love is blind. Yeah, where they're in pods, which yeah. is super messed up. But anyway, in the first one they're talking about this actually worked for us. We gave them an ultimatum. We split up. We realized we missed each other. We came back, and it's like okay, this is really like <laughs> so fragile and flimsy, but okay. But the second one, you can tell. <laughs> They had failed the experiment. They're like, we gotta do the show again. And so the light is gone from their eyes. They're like, okay, well, you know the deal. Uh, break up, and then you'll date other people, and we'll see how this goes. <laughs> it's just like, and that's so clear. That's when they said the psychology thing. They were like, psychologists said this is really bad for relationships. <laughs> yeah. But Netflix gave us another thing. Basically, into their yeah. We got ha. in the, ha. <laughs> We really want people to fall in love. <laughs> Psychologist says it's the worst. The first season sucked. <laughs> what happens in the first season? Did you guys watch it? Mm-hmm. It was a mess. It was Spoiler a mess. alert. Who gets married and then hates it? Uh, do any of them get married? I don't remember if any of them actually get married. Because that's the thing, too, though. It's like people like don't act, aren't actually going to do it unless they have nothing to lose. Like, what's the other one we saw at the island with the guy with the slick-backed hair and the blonde and the... Matchmaker. Matchmaker. Match- Something. Like, you can say anything you want. It's like, I love this girl. I'm going to ask your dad for your hand in marriage right now. And then you watch it later, and it's like, this guy broke up the day after the show. And it's like, yeah. of course, you can say whatever you want. Yeah. But that's the stuff I fall for. That's the stuff that I'm like, ah, oh, man, I guess he's committing so fast. <laughs> love truly is blind. <laughs> <laughs> the best is on Love is Blind is when they finally meet each other and you can immediately see, see their like <laughs> Oh my god. You're beautiful. Gosh. I love you. You're beautiful. You're You're beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> but they're You're closing beautiful. their eyes as they're running the whole yeah, like, time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so crazy. <sighs> it's so sad. It's so sad. That's sad. Did you guys ever have a, a Love is Blind uh, moment in your life? I remember I met a girl in. Someone gave my number to a girl in junior high, and we never met, and we had all those conversations, just, just conversations over the phone. And I remember my friends having those. Yeah. Just blind texting. I never met her. She lived in a different city than I was in or a different town, and uh, we finally met up in at, at a park. Yeah. And uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like that at all. Really? It was so sad, yeah. Because you had a picture in your head versus what... It- she actually turned out to well, be. Well, I just thought, like, yeah. I, I, obviously, I had, like, wild ideas when I was a kid. Because you just think weird stuff. Yeah. And so I don't think I even wanted to date anyone. Yeah. It's just it was part of the, like... The culture. Yeah, it was the culture. It was, like, watching, you know, toy toy ads on TV. Yeah. You wanted the toy no matter what. And so I think I was kind of like that when I was younger. So I was like, I got to have a relationship. Got it. Got it. All my friends are making out. I got to be making out. And then when it would come down to it, I'd be like, no, I don't want it. <laughs> do, do you remember when social media first started coming out and you started seeing like profile pictures of people completely outside of your network? And like, I remember when this happened, there was this, you know, I was in high school and there was this person I thought was really beautiful and she was like two counties over, but because of a mutual friend, I remember like screwing up the courage to just like directly message her and just like, I don't know you at all, but I was like, you know, you're very beautiful to me. (laughs) And I'm like, what was I expecting? It's just like, thanks. 
accent, but in my mind, I was like, this because this is how it starts. This is how it begins. Did she say how anything? Are we gonna... No, she just said thanks so much. <laughs> and that was it. <sighs> but in my mind, you like you're like, oh my, this is how this is how it starts. But like, what else are you supposed to do when Dude, a stranger? Yeah. I'm too young for this, but did you guys ever go into chat rooms with like older crazy people? I, d- to... I didn't. I didn't know how to read or type or anything like that until oh, yeah. like way later in life. And so my friends would do that and I would stand behind them and I'd be like, type sex. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. He did. <laughs> so crazy. So yeah, I had like an avatar friend that would type stuff for me. I'm With like, no responsibility. Yeah, but I didn't even know what it was because yeah, early AOL chat it wasn't even like really pictures and stuff. It was just like a room. Maybe yeah. maybe some really basic emojis, maybe. But yeah, like you'd go you'd go on AOL chat, but you only had maybe three friends on AOL chat when it yeah. first started. So you'd wait for Alley, whatever to hop on I'm like oh she's on and then you'd wait for it just all day to try to, to try to i'm like so the phone's good. right there you can just talk to her anytime you want dude i feel you like know. that show pen 15 made chats the best oh, like the, they represented pet chat is like the, the best perfect yeah. way i felt like i was there i felt yeah. transported <laughs> just, that show's so good dude, it's good hard to rewatch it's so fun to watch the first time. It's hard to willingly choose to go through the discomfort again. Oh, Not really? for me. It's so cringy. Not for me. At, the, at one point, my whole feed was just pin 15 <laughs> clips. It's so just good. Just watching it out of order. Oh, I'm Incredible. So... Nah. I... Yeah, when, I feel like when I was a kid, like, a lot of people had phones, like, even in middle school. And so... and Or iPods where you could text. And so it, like escalated pretty fast yeah. i had this friend and i she let me read through the text with her boyfriend and it was just like i love you i love you too you're so beautiful you're so handsome you make me <laughs> smile you make me laugh my stomach has so many butterflies when i'm with you <laughs> 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 just no substance at all for scrolls. scrolls. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was weak. Because that, that. that's, that's all you. <laughs> uh, you best. I just think about it. I can't stop thinking about you. Because that's all a middle school boyfriend or girlfriend can be. Yeah. Like, you're not really getting physical. You might be holding hands, but it's just, you make me feel good. You make me feel good. You make me feel good. And then eventually that disappears. It's like, I think we should break up. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I remember junior high age finding out, because I wasn't in the culture because i was homeschooled so like when i would come and hang out with my friends i'd be like they'd be like i have a girlfriend and i'm like what how (laughs) what'd you do do? what'd you do and it literally is saying like i like you You do you like me you like me too we like each other and then that's boyfriend and girlfriend that's it yeah that's it but but you're telling me some people started off that way and then dated for like eight years well yeah so Crazy. So there were two twin. There were there were a pair of twins at my school, and they were the most popular. And it was always like a crazy thing. It's like, do you like Kobe or do you like Chris? And so would be like, oh well, I like Kent. And they'd be like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not even a twin. He's not even a twin. He's just a single. Kobe or Chris? <laughs> Kobe or Chris? Kobe or Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Keep up. <laughs> he spells his name with a K. <laughs> So the twin boys were hot, and then there was twin girls in the te- in the school too. There weren't. I don't remember any twin girls our age, Dang but it. one of them. Twi- I was thinking twin on twin. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dang. Nah. Dang. Type of sex no. Twin on one. <laughs> okay, so Kobe and. Toby and Chris. So one of them got off the market pretty fast. We went to a really small middle school, and. So he dated a girl for a really long time until his senior year, the beginning of his senior year. Oh, my from, gosh. From, uh, I think, sixth grade to the end, the beginning of his senior year. And then, <laughs> oh, man, I'm nervous because I'm like, I know people from my high school sometimes watch this stuff. Not the live stream. <laughs> Dude, it's yeah. okay. We they know about the Kobe and Chris. Yeah. Dude, they know about Kobe and Chris. But he broke up with, or she broke up with him, and he was devastated. And they were like twin twins. Like, they were like, yeah, we're probably going to grow up, buy twin houses in the suburbs with matching pools, and live right next to each other. <laughs> like, it was so cute. They really thought, Dude, like... Dude, it's so cool. I hope they do it. And now the housing market's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> You're going to be roommates in a New York apartment. <laughs> there you go. But, anyways, he dated a sophomore who was, like, the most childlike-looking high schooler I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 she 
she played like the little girl in all the plays. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so anyways, I don't blame him. Of course. But it was just so funny. Everyone was just like, because when he broke up, everyone was like, Kobe's free. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> And then he dated like a child and was like, Kobe. <laughs> Kobe, what are you doing? <laughs> and like, and she reverted? was not a kid. Like he was a senior, she's a sophomore, but it's weird in high school that's years. That's a, that's in high school years. Guy. That's a lot. Cause yeah. puberty ages you over the summer. <laughs> and so yes. it is a, an adult man dating a child <laughs> <laughs> because he got his adult wings over the summer and yeah. then she was still like yeah yeah and i think he realized and he, like they broke up and he was like what was i doing and what it was, was like, like we don't know breakups <laughs> kobe, <laughs> i don't know kobe what are you doing later <laughs> it, it yeah. is wild my wife is a junior high teacher and one of the funnest times we chaperoned uh w- it was way fun. We went and chaperoned. They needed chaperones for their like little dance at a junior high. Oh yeah. And so my wife and I, as full grown adults, got to like witness the like social chaos of what trying to like date and dance and stuff like that was. Yeah. And at junior high age, it's so insane because some of the kids have aged already completely. Yeah. Like yeah. they just look like normal, like young college students. Right? Yeah. And then some of them still have like child shoulders. Yeah. Oh, like just gosh. like little tiny backpacks straps that are wearing, sliding like... off. Just like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but they don't know that, right? And so yeah. there's still like there's like an adult girl that looks like a college student who's obsessed with this like eleven year old little like <laughs> tiny <laughs> dude a song who has like boy. small arms. But he has like spiky blonde hair like this that's like oh. off to the side. It was so it's cute crazy. to watch him like dance and date and be like like so nervous around each other. And I'm like, dude, this is so, so <laughs> wild to watch. It's yeah. so crazy. Because we treat growing up like it is like what's uniform? the word? Like uniform. A, or yeah. like a gradient. Yeah, like I agree. you slowly get older. Well, and it's like in Target, it's like the sizes are like nine to ten. Yeah. It's like, okay, if you're nine to ten, you fit in these sizes. If not, you're a freak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is weird. I mean, what if they did that now? Are these age thirty four pants? <laughs> yeah. Age thirty four. H oh, I can't wear my old pants. I'm twenty four <laughs> now. <laughs> I grew out of my 20 year old pants. Yeah. <laughs> dude, but I, yeah, I feel like aging happens in like stages, right? Yeah. Like, that's why people are like, dude, they, they age like the president. Oh, like, yeah. Like, you stress or whatever just sets Ages it out. so fast. Yeah, dude. And so some of the kids, it happens like over summer. It's and so weird to watch. And all CEOs home. are, all guy CEOs are like bald. Yeah. Right? Well, I'm worried yeah. about my second aging because I think that's going to happen because it's just like, I've been told, like, oh, you can still pass for your 20s, but I'm worried for that one year when it's like, poof, immediately jump to 39. Dude, I think it's I like, hit it yeah, already. You look 39. I think I hit it already because, yeah, over the course of like the last two years, I've gotten like, gray hair right here like i look at pictures when i first started at the theater oh, i'm like yeah. what the heck did i look young <laughs> you look completely different like a little kid just like yeah <laughs> i'm trying let's, mom i'm trying let's play hula hoops yeah dude it's it is weird let's so play jump rope. yeah i think i hit it because now it's like an aging man it's scary it happens overnight dude you got to stay unstressed <sighs> you got to stay out of the sun <sighs> yeah sun sucks we shouldn't be afraid of aging so much. You though. gotta eat Korean food. No, you gotta be afraid of aging because it all sucks from here. My Just... grandma told me this. Okay. Go on. She said every decade. Your sexist grandma. <laughs> no. Who hates women. Okay, Go on. no. Your grandma who's having a renaissance of feminism. <laughs> yeah. She says every decade I love more than the last. Wow. <laughs> That's something you Is say to true keep for this? young people from feeling bad for you, so they'll still hang out with you. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still cool. Where are you going? I love it. <laughs> if I could have my youth back, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want <laughs> Unless there's a way. Unless. <laughs> you haven't heard do. anything, have you? <laughs> if you could tap someone on the shoulder and steal a year of their life and make you a year younger, would you have that power? Oh, to take them, yeah. to take another person's life? Yeah. I would give my older years away for free 
And Hannah no, Mount. Oh, that's you. right. She wants out. <laughs> I want out so fast. <laughs> she if, I, want if I die at 55... I think that's you perfect. just don't want to be in pain. <laughs> no, like you don't. Yeah. You don't. You don't want to be like a like a crinkly old sixty year old. I, oh, dude. Yeah, I don't want pain. I don't want the fear of like if I fall once, it's over. Right, but what I'm saying is, is just like okay, I'm 34. I just aged you a year, and I just de-aged me a year. Would yeah, you do definitely that? do that. Would, you yeah. definitely do that. Yeah. Would you morally be like cool with that? It's like I stole a year of your yeah, life. Yeah, kids don't even remember the time when they were kids. <laughs> so, so you I would just, do kids. I would, <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't do this. <laughs> no, no, no. He'd, he'd gaslight them to think they were always that age. <laughs> you yeah. were always five. It's he, your fifth birthday. You just work in the maternity ward at a hospital. It's like, you're one years old. You're one years old. Dude, yeah. <laughs> you Dude. could trap a kid to be one years old forever. What? You could be like the witch in Rapunzel, take a kid, put it in a tower, and then keep them one years old forever because you could just always take a year. For them to touch. Oh, can you give a year too? Not in this scenario, but maybe. Well, take a year, give a year? I know I'm saying they. you take a year, they grow another year, you take that year again. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> I think you're saying if I were to touch you, you would immediately age to be 25, and I would now de-age to 33. You're right. I was. Yeah, right. do that. Yeah. <laughs> I would find volunteers. It's a quid. It's a quid pro quo. Yeah, do like the vampire system. Because yeah, some kids are like young and they want to be older. Like I just want over this school. And if you're, what's the difference between like 88 and 89? You know, dude, a lot. A, <laughs> a lot. Every time my back would hurt, I'd be like. <laughs> it'd be hard it'd be hard to resist that temptation yeah i think so and it is like in like vampire books they they do they find the willing yeah and they make them their familiar but they typically yeah. do it for the promise that they'll become a agent of the night well in some vampire books it just feels good to be bit <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They always like, uh, uh, your canines uh, clenching into my jugular. Yes. Because it's always like a melding of life force. Yeah. That's how they do it. I think Dude, that's how they changed justify forever, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I feel this life force. <laughs> <laughs> Through its fangs. But it so is crazy. weird that they're trying to convince us that would feel good. Yeah. It's Isn't like, it that they have to stop? Like the, the vampire has to stop? Like they have to bite them, yeah, and then stop. They have or to at least exercise that's the Twilight, right? extreme restrained. self-restraint. And then they have to give them blood in most stories. They have to take you to the edge of death, and they have to give you their blood in order for you to turn into a vampire. If you're reading Dracula, if you're reading, oh, well, is it Dracula or, or that's that one's Twilight? No, Twilight's Venom. You bite someone with Venom, they eventually will turn into a vampire. If you bite them and but don't it's kill hard them, to stop. It right. is hard, it is hard to, to stop. stop. So most of the time you just Dude, kill them. That's, uh, that you for sure them. was written by a Catholic. That's written by a Mormon woman. <laughs> but yeah, by a Mormon lady. Mormon <laughs> lady. It's, it's hard to stop. It's hard to stop. You want we more. All know. We all know it's hard to stop. And you can't go Can we just talk real quick how, how the twilight is, is a Mormon's metaphor of what the celestial kingdom will be? You're forever young. You can have sex constantly without recharging. Gabriel is raising his eyebrows. <laughs> Gabe is an they active Mormon. It is. It's a, you're you're with your young eternal family forever. Did I don't she think it was that. that. I it don't think is. it was that. When I read that, I'm like, this is what that same model would be on Earth. You're oh, you're powerful. You're young. Okay. You're able to no, 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 no. Was I was just that. the lives forever. No, no, no. It was just living forever. <laughs> Restraining, no one else. exercising restraint, law chastity. <laughs> exactly. Tell law chastity. Exactly. Don't, don't you don't have go around to show touching. restraint, and then you are exalted to vampire. That's what I'm saying. It is a higher level of being where you are forever young and beautiful and with your eternal partner and family in a stasis of perfection, beauty, forever. That and the like... brown people can't make it there. They have to be something else. <laughs> <laughs> and all the browns got to be werewolves, dogs. Go be dogs. <laughs> Get out! Oh my! He can't have none of you in my heaven. We're right out here for having them browns in heaven. Oh! Get these, get them on their reservation now. Oh my! It is bad. That okay. is crazy. Can we cancel that lady yeah. now? Is Twilight canceled? That we need to is crazy. Now. She did that. Team Jacob. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, that fun. is crazy. Dude. And. Edward, 
well, everyone's already talked about this, but their family was a part of the Civil War, and they fought for the wrong side. <laughs> well, yeah, ja- Jasper was a Civil War yeah. general, I believe. Which is insane. So, yeah, maybe it's not about the Celestial Kingdom and Mormon Church stuff. It's about the civil rights. <laughs> Well, that's one angle, but anyway, I stand by it. I stand by it. If you were going to write a fantasy novel that's like, what is your personal fantasy? But in the sci-fi world, it would be that. I'm transformed. I'm basically unto a god, and I'm I'm with my forever person forever. Anyway. And you're a vegetarian. That's true. Because they only eat deer meat. They only eat deer blood. They only eat deer blood. The the lion will lay down with the lamb and 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 drink deer blood. And we get to play (laughs) baseball. And baseball. (laughs) Vampire oh, yeah, baseball. True. American baseball. American baseball. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Dude, be in high is, school for all time. Well, that's wild. I didn't think of the whole like yeah, if that's her if that's her view, then the brown people in the show can't go there. They can't and they uh, will die. They can't be exalted. That is so ooh, disgusting. Not too far out. Well, yeah. and, and get this, well, because Jacob is mortal, him and Renesme are only married for time. Dude, there we go. They're only married for time. But Bella and Edward are married for time, not eternity. They're seat. Anyway. Wait, I didn't finish it. Well, well, who, who does Jacob end up with? Their baby. You don't know this? He falls in love with their... It's this well, weird... He ahead. doesn't Edward's fall in baby? love. Edward's baby? And, okay. With Bella. He imprints. Bella's, which it's is... a weird werewolf <laughs> mystical thing, which is like, it's stupid. It's just like, you you feel a paternal instinct at first, where it's like, I will die for you. But the second you become of age, it turns to romantic to love. And you want to be with that person forever. That's that what way. would happen to Edward. So that's what happened so to Jacob. To what I think happened is A, Stephanie Myers is freaky. And She's wild. B, I think she was trying to justify why Jacob loved Bella so much. And so that was her thing. Because Jacob says, like, oh, I didn't even like you at all. <laughs> I just like your future baby. Yeah, I just liked the eggs inside of you. And oh that's my why I'm so, so pulled to you. Well, plus, the, very plus, weird. plus, very plus weird. she's trying to like tie up a loose thread where like everyone ends up with somebody. And that's she didn't what I'm have saying. Anybody, that's so what I'm saying. Like, she was giving him a happy ending and then justifying why he like loved her. How he could be okay not having not Bella. Loving her, yeah. Which is like the grossest it's way. Magic. Be like, oh, I ba- know. Baby magic. Baby. <laughs> baby, baby magic. magic. <laughs> Um, all I'm right, glad well, guys, I didn't finish it. That's all the time. I'm we glad have now. I didn't uh, finish Gabriel, it. Gabriel, any uh, notable comments or praise we can absorb for our egos? Oh yeah, let's go to the team. Uh, honestly, I haven't been watching very closely because you didn't need suggestions today. Uh, there's probably some good stuff in there. Wait, I want to read one. Let's read see. the first one you see with your eyes. Uh, I'd rather not read that one. Oh, uh, <laughs> why did they say? Are they mad? I'll tell you later. Uh, oh, come on. Tell no, no, they're not mad. No one's mad. No one's mad. Okay. Uh, all, all positive stuff. Um, <laughs> so here, this one. This one's from Star-Lord. I'm somewhat new to watching your content, but still want to say thanks. The shorts are really funny and bring a laugh every time. Uh-oh. Sweet. So, uh, but what about the longs? What about the longs, though, dude? Yeah, what about talk times? <laughs> DJ. <laughs> Uh, Ethan was in chat today. He said he got a girlfriend in middle school because he gave her an Oreo. Oh, that's Ethan. nice. So what, what a charmer. Generous. What a charmer. Tell Ethan thanks. Uh, and we had someone in chat called Lynn I Am who was very ready to give suggestions today. So, uh, Lynn, please give us one. We're, ca- back. we're back in normal programming tomorrow, friends. We were just trying something different. It's called experimentation. Yes, we will be very ready and happy to receive your suggestions next time. And... Oh, this was a good one. From the, uh, early in the stream, uh, someone called Nick1742 said that um, David and Shay look like Kratos and his kid. Uh, <laughs> from, Loki. From God of War. From God of War. Oh. Dude, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cradles and his kid. I like that. Yeah. I like John that. Nick, twenty-seven. Uh, isn't that the one where he kills people with the pushing his thumbs in their eyes, and then you push the joy cons? Yeah. Ooh, scary. Dude, it's like it's the a most whole graphic series about him. Nintendo face. Yeah, it's Nintendo face. You go, <laughs> and it, in the movie, it crushes the eyes, uh, and on your controller, you're placing you're placing it down. Dang. Yeah. Any other comments, Gabrielle? 
Um, Ethan would like to know uh, how you like the mic stand, Zach. This new one? Is it new? Oh, yeah, it is new. I love it. I actually don't know if it's new, but we have another one in the car. Thanks, Ethan. Good. I'll okay, see you last today. comment. Uh, <laughs> last two comments. ILH says, thanks. Uh, shared all the musical Mondays I've watched or listened to so far. Wonderful. And Rue Boo says, yeah, it was cool. Keep it up. Nice. nice. All right. Hey. Thanks so thanks, much. Rue Boo. Rue Boo. Have a wonderful Rubu. day. Yeah. And uh, never stop talking to your friends. All right. See you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>